See, he's pushy. <laughs> No, Bailey, you're going to have to wait. <laughs> These guys are pushy in the morning. You know, they're millionaires, so they want their stuff played. They're just going to have to learn to wait. All right. WAFC Pure Country. I'm all thrown off now. All right. Steve Daniel on the hook. Brought to you by Shortcake Sweet Shop and Eatery. 311 Cowboy Way just inside the airport. Before you get to the terminal, just smell the food. Look for the place with the most cars. That's where you're going to want to go eat. And that's what I knew about that. Good morning, Steve. Hey, good morning. Hey, so the lake level is 14.24. It's gone up quite a bit. Yeah, it's coming up. We had a good rain uh, yesterday. So it's uh, coming up. Well, the day before yesterday, it rained so much. But, yeah, it's coming up. It's a good thing. You know, Labor Day weekend, it's my favorite weekend of the whole year because we're getting ready for the winter time. You know, we're getting ready. We got college football. When college football gets started, man, we're looking forward to chunking some shiners out there on the big O. And, uh, you know, we got a big show this weekend. I'm hooked up to Stephen and Dale. I got the two, the two high school kids, Mocha Choby, that actually uh, finished fifth out of 300 in the, uh, the high school national championship up there in Chattanooga, in, uh, Chattanooga on uh, Chickamauga Lake. Got a full show all about them. Interview both of them. It's a great show. So you got a lot. There's a lot going on this weekend. There is a lot going on. There's a ton of football. Um, college starts to well. College actually started last night. Yeah. And then we have um, high school tonight. Labelle and uh, Cluiston. Tomorrow we got college football. Sunday we got the finals of the regular season for NASCAR. And I'm I'm guessing that I'm pulling for Ross Chastain. He's not in the hunt. He's like 27 points out. He's pretty much got a win, or somebody ahead of him's got a wreck. Um, and he, so he's going to need help to get into the playoffs. But we're going to talk more about that. I got a, I got an interview next week set up with uh, Jeff Striegel from the Motor Racing Network. Jeff and I have become texting buddies. We text probably twice a week about the race. So I'm going to talk to him about the playoffs, and we're going to do a special segment on that next Friday. Uh, the lake level, as I said, is coming up. It's fourteen two four. You talked about the, uh, the young guys you're going to have on your show this weekend. Now, let's talk superstitions. Yeah, let's talk. One thing we got to talk about first, we're going to talk about the Ace Hardware event tomorrow. Yes. With the, uh, the adoption, because that's at 11 to 1. You can come out there. They're going to have food out there. They're going to have music. Oh, I'm there. Food. Meet the staff out there at, uh, Ace Hardware. The great people, uh, they owe me, I mean, all those people out there that work there, they're local folks, great people, going to give some, some animals away. So really looking forward to that. You know, the bad thing about it, if I take Deb there, you know, she's going to want to take them all home with her. Yeah. Well, you know? that'd be all right. Yeah. Not for, not for you, but for Deb. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, you talk, what we talked about the other day, we talked about, you know, are fishermen superstitious? Yeah. Yes. You was going to look into something. You were going to research something I did about research the bananas. Some. Yep, there is a thing about bananas. Um, I just I looked up this morning nine common fishing superstitions and anglers' thoughts on them. So I don't really care what those anglers thought. I want to know what you think, and we're going to try to do this in less than eight minutes. I think uh, bananas are the best thing you can eat out there in the boat. You can just eat it, throw the peel over on the side, just throw it out in the water because it's going to decay just like all that dead grass. And uh, you can wolf those things down and get some... Get a little uh, protein in you, and uh, it's good ener good energy food, bananas. And you can eat them very, very fast. All right, well, they're saying fruits. They hadn't heard of pineapples before, but so that was interesting. But they're saying bananas are bad luck and pineapples are good luck. Uh, never bring any fruit on the fruit but a pineapple, one guy said. What do you think? I don't know. Anything cold out there on a hot day, you know, cold... Cold uh, pineapple, cold watermelon, you know, you can keep those in your cooler, chop them up, have them all right, right there where you can just grab it and eat it. That's very, very good for you. Hydrate you a little bit, too. So, no, that's, but what about the bananas? What's the deal with the bananas? It's the oil on the um, peel. Yeah. That it gets on the line and the fish can smell it. No. That's, I read it the other day and I said, it's on the internet. It's got to be true. I don't know. I've heard a lot of stories, but 
I've heard that, <laughs> you know, ships go down, you know, and a bun bunch of bananas float. You know, back years ago, those sailing ships, they had to carry stuff that would last a long time. Right. You know, they had to carry stuff that they could eat and... You know, they didn't cook they didn't cook steaks and stuff out of those sailing ships. They had to have something they could survive with. Right. And they carried a lot of fruit and stuff, but uh I guess you wouldn't think a banana would last that long. No. All right, so music is another one. Uh somebody said music playing music scares the fish. Well, I've got guys that won't fish it. You know, I got guys that I play golf with that's gonna have music on. They got their country music on, their oldies. They got all kind of stuff on, and uh, fishermen the same way. Some of them like to have a little music going on. I don't think it bothers them in the least. But I know you can if it's really, really loud. It probably could, but uh, you know, the I like it quiet. I, I don't would, want any music. I would say the vibration wouldn't. You know, you got that. You got that. Uh, yeah, it might go down the line. You right. know, it might make your bait act a little better. I don't know. Uh, somebody said positive attitude. Leave the bad mood at home. The fish can tell and won't come. Uh, you know and follow the fish regulations wherever you go. It's good karma. Well, you know one thing. If, if you catch, worst thing you can do. Now, this is what I know for a fact. Worst thing you can do is catch one on the first cast. You pull out there and throw out there and catch one on the first cast, it never gets any better than that. I've had times when we caught one on the first cast and never caught another one. And that's, that's amazing. You wouldn't think that could have ever happened. But I know guys, some of the tournament fishermen, when they pull up to their best spot, you'll see them, they'll, they'll turn and throw it out behind them where they know they're probably not going to catch one. And then they'll throw in there where they want to catch one. But they definitely don't want to catch one on the first cast. But I don't know. I've seen that happen. So, you know, if we're, if we're having a slow day, I said, uh, did old Jim catch that one on the first cast or was it a second cast? Because that might be what's wrong with us today. <laughs> All right, kissing fish. Kissing a fish is probably is, probably came from watching guys like Jimmy Houston kiss fish on TV, as it did from the old wives' tale of spitting in the first fish's mouth for luck and good catches for the rest of the day. <laughs> Jimmy does kiss his fish, but I, I do not kiss fish. Yeah, no. Uh-uh. No. Lucky lures, you have a few of them, that A1 bomber. Well, that's that's just my go-to right there. I don't know. I don't know if it's lucky or not. It's just a good tool that I use a lot. It has a lot of uh, things you can do with it. It's a topwater bait. It's a it's a crank bait. It's a jerk bait. You can do a lot of things with that one lure. I think that's why I like it so much. But as far as it being lucky, nah, I don't think it's lucky. All right. What about lucky hats? You wear the same hat on the lake every day? No, but I know a lot of guys that they're doing really good in the turn, but they make sure they got the same shirt on, the same thing they wore yesterday. I hope it. I hope yeah. they washed it at least. Yeah, you never know about those guys. You know, they don't really care. The fish, the fish don't, don't care. care either. The fish don't care. That cameraman is about with you. He might care. But uh, I know when I used to bowl in leagues back twenty years ago, I would do the same thing over and over and over until it didn't work. Until I thought, okay, well now it's time to change it up and. You know, the, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and hoping for different results. Well, you know, you talked about bowling. And that brought back some stuff to me. You talked about you carried a bunch of bowling balls with you because when they when they wax those lanes every day, it's probably a little different the next day than it yeah. was. And it's the same way with fishing. The lake's never the, exactly the same. You know, you might have slick water one day. You might have a little chop on the water. You might have a lot of wind. It's the same way, when you mentioned that about bowling and you carried five different balls because you didn't know how that ball was going to react to that wood it was going down because of the, the finish that was on it. It might be slicker one day. It might grab your ball a little bit better. So, you know, that's just smart. Yeah. Um, and my arms got pretty big back then, too. Cause, but All right, cows. They say if cows are laying down, it means the fishing is going to be tough. I always thought if cows were laying down, they were just tired. No, I know that for a fact. It's uh, it's probably in the farmer's uh, almanac because if the cows are laying down, if I'm, if I'm driving to, uh, say, Lake Port, and I see all the cows, because you pass a lot of cows, you know, when you're driving to Lake Port from Clewiston, if they're all laying down, it's like, oh, the fish aren't biting. And there's something about that. But all, if those cows are up and they're all moving around and they're eating and stuff, 
you know, you figure it's going to be a little active. Now, what are those cows feeling that maybe those fish are feeling? Is there something there? You know, we Could don't be something know. in the atmosphere. That's just something we we don't feel like they do. We don't feel what those fish are feeling. We don't feel what those cows. What makes those cows get up and start eating? Well, maybe when the when the farmer brings the hay out in the field, you know, I guarantee you they're all going to get up. Listen, I'm not hungry until Miss Teresa puts dinner on the table, and then I'm <laughs> hungry. All right, we were talking about first casts just a few minutes ago. Uh, the first cast is an omen. Popular fish in superstition is that if one bites on the first catch, the rest of the day is going to suck. No, nope, I've seen it. And then number one is bananas. The banana superstition is easily the most common of all fishing superstitions, believed to be derived from sailors who said spoiled bananas on long voyages attracted disease-ridden bugs. But now it's commonly believed to be just a general kiss of death to a good fishing day, while anglers like Jacob Wheeler debunk these beliefs on a regular basis. It still rang for most, uh, mostly true for the uh, millions of Fish, fish brain anglers pulled. So I like bananas. I do too. Yeah, you know we all eat a lot of bananas. They're they're yeah. easy to eat out there in the boat, and and uh, they won't spoil in one day while you're out there. Just grab you. You know most of the hotels you go to, they have some fruit out there. Grab you a couple of bananas as you yep. go out the door. Absolutely, I love. When I run down to the one corner store down here, and I won't say who it is because they don't advertise Marathon, um, I'll grab a soda and a banana. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I had a bad cough yesterday. That's why I didn't come in yesterday. <laughs> so anyway, it bothered me a little bit this morning. But, but uh, yeah, bananas are, bananas are just good. I like them. I like them. Yeah. I did find, though, the other day I left one in the car. Yeah. Yeah, that a was a thing. smell yeah. that, oh. Yeah. It was horrible. So um, we said the lake level, lake's coming up. You're getting ready for busy season because your vacation's almost over. Yeah, it is. And that's one thing. I love the summertime when things slow down, get to play a little bit more golf, and, and uh, it's, just, it's just more laid back then. You know, Clueless is a laid back town in the summertime, but boy, it gets busy, you know, in the wintertime when all our guests get ready to come down. You know, all the campgrounds get full. It's a busy place in the wintertime, so. Speaking of golf. Sugarland Masonic Lodge number 281 presents its 12th annual golf scramble, November 16th, at the Clewiston Golf Course. We're golfing in it. I know Teresa's going to be our beer girl. <laughs> she don't know it, but she does now. <laughs> you know, the golf course makes a lot of money on these events like that. And, you know, in the wintertime when it gets here, there's something going on. All I think there may be something going on this weekend there. But, uh, they attract a lot of folks. You know, we're blessed to have that golf course out there. It's in really, really good shape right now, too, and Robbie's done such a great job. He's got some really good guys working with him right now that, I mean, there's not any weeds on the greens. The greens are pristine. It's just perfect shape out there, and uh, so Robbie's done a great job out there, but, man, it's the only golf course in uh, Henry County. Yeah. Now, I will tell you this, on a Sunday, you and I will figure out what Sunday, but you're not out on the lake, and maybe if you don't mind, I'll go with you. Now, I'm not a good golfer at all. I might hit one in the hole every four, <laughs> but it would be good to get out. And, i got to practice. I don't want to look like a total idiot. Yeah, you need to practice because golf's a hard game. Golf's a, golf's a hard game. I would, uh, but I'm looking forward to this golf tournament. Did it three years ago when we moved down here. They Actually, three years ago, they had it in September. So yeah. Teresa and I come down house hunting. And I ended up golfing in it. It was myself, my dad, and my brother Christian, and somebody else. I don't remember who. Yeah, let me give you one tip. Okay. Tee it high and swing hard, just in case you hit the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like pretty good advice. Robbie would probably tell me the same thing over at the <laughs> golf course. All right, so what do you got on for the weekend? I'm obviously going to watch college sports. Yeah, Tennessee plays. They're not going to be on televised. They're playing uh, UT Chattanooga. And uh, but I tell you what, there's there's going to be some great. For the first week, there's some really really you know, high ranked teams playing each other. You know, Florida Miami. That's going to be probably the game of the day. So I know everybody's going to be watching that. So 
right. So what are we going to do Monday? You going to be out fishing or you going to be with me? I think I'm going to be off Monday, so probably me and you Monday. All right, me and you Monday morning, 7.30, brought to you by Shortcake Sweet Shop and Eatery. Now listen to me, folks. Pull up to the airport, go into the main door, excuse me, smell that food, just walk in the first door to your right. It's right there. Tell Ashley, Wayne, Laura, and the rest of the staff that you're there to get some grub. Craig and Steve from WAFC told you to hook it, hook them up, hook you up with a good meal, and you will not be disappointed. I think I'm going to head up there later for lunch. Yeah, it's going to be good. You know, we got to make sure everybody comes to Ace Hardware tomorrow and yes. check out the animals. If you're looking to adopt an animal, come out there tomorrow. They're going to give you everything you need to know about adopting an animal. And uh, it's going to be a great event. 11 to 1 at Ace Hardware. Me and Dale are going to be there. Yeah, uh, Teresa and I are going to be there. After I'm done with my remote for Action Power over at K&M Drugs, we're going to slide up there and, and visit with everybody. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we're not taking another. She's listening. I know she is. We are not bringing another animal <laughs> home. We are not. All right? I just want to make that clear. Pure Country WAFC will be back. News and weather, top of the hour. With Brian Matthews and Charles Murphy, Pure Country WAFC. Good job.